Welcome back to Behind the Scenes with UiPath, and today we're in San Diego at uh, the IQPC Transformational Business Leaders Conference. But even more important, I got to catch up with one of our clients from City National Bank, David Hernandez. Thank you, How are you doing? Doing well, yourself? Great. We had a great panel discussion yeah. today. Yeah. Um, I thought everybody was very intrigued with yeah. what you guys are doing, um, some of the process and how you kind of implemented it. Yeah. So let's tell uh, our viewership, who's kind of in the digital world here, what you're doing with RPA yeah. from a bank perspective. You know, we, we're in finance a lot, but I think you guys are doing even some even cooler stuff. Yeah. Um, so get, get, get a rundown. Yeah, yeah. So we actually just started our RPA journey in May, uh, so a few months ago, kind of in our infancy. But our main focus right now is actually on our uh, client onboarding into accounts. So anything related to actually setting up an account and maintenance as far as fee waivers, um, setting up an actual checking account or getting them checks ordered, account covers, different things, anything that's going to allow the customer to be onboarded and give them what they need to be successful. Um, so that's our main focus. And then we're also going to be taking a, you know, a look into other functions of the bank, such as finance and accounting, yeah. more typical RPA applications, but right now it's mainly focused on uh, back office operations. So. Um Unattended robots, Correct. so kind of end-to-end -end processes Correct. of some sort, a lot of forms. Yes. Um, but, and we had talked a little about this, again, about that benefiting that customer interaction, right? Your customers, high-level customers for the bank, um, how does it make their life easier, right? It's it's going to make it a lot easier reducing our cycle time. So whenever they have any kind of request that needs to be done on that account, being able to minimize that and having it done you know, within seconds. Uh, just to give you an example, one of the processes we've automated took on average of 10 to 15 minutes for a colleague to process it. Now it's done within seconds. So you can imagine the impact that that has our client. Now, if they need to get a fee wave or you need to call and get you know, a, a new replacement card, we're able to do that within seconds. Yeah. And them. So it's definitely going to impact the, the, the actual client experience. Now we talked about two different ways that I think uh, a lot of our customers are working either, you know, kind of a COE downward or a citizen developer. How has City National Bank and you, you attacked, you know, RPA implementation? Yeah, so we've decided to go with the centralized COE model. So we actually are, I think we actually have an offshore development model as well. So everything's going to be centralized, standardized. It's going to really enable us to scale quickly. So a lot of reusable components within UiPath are going to, we're going to be using whether it be with, with the, our current department or as we scale to multiple departments. But the goal is to have standardization with yeah. our development practices. Yeah. Um, when, let's talk a little bit about the people, right? I, I love talking about, you know, again, people, we, we, a lot of people say, hey, the robots are going to take my job. Yeah, yeah. You know, how, how did you work with that within City National Bank? How did you do that? It, it, it's really educating everybody. Not only is it educating the leadership at the executive level, it's also the middle management and the actual colleagues that are doing the work. It's really getting them bought in on the vision, right? It's not that we're going to be replacing everybody's job with a robot. It's more of how are we going to improve not only your lives, but also the, our client lives and being able to automate processes. Um, I've gotten mixed reviews or even kind of understanding of process or what RPP is, right? So I've had conversations with that think there's a physical robot going to be sitting at the desk and performing the work. No, it's, a, a, it's really critical to actually educate yeah. uh, everybody within the organization to understand what RPA is, what's the intent, and what the capabilities are. It's, obviously, it's not a silver bullet, right? There is some limitations, but really educating on every, everybody on what the application of RPA is going to be within the organization. There's not a desk. There's not a seat next exactly. to you where the robot's exactly. going to be exactly. hanging out with you. Exactly. Don't have a second chair at my desk. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so one of the things, we're at Process Excellence. We're talking about Process Excellence here, and actually your title is yeah. Process Excellence. How do you feel, I mean, how does, give me an equation from RPA to process excellence. Yeah, yeah so, so our structure right now is uh, operational excellence. So we have a few different verticals, one of them being automation, the other being process excellence. So whenever we're doing a process, we want to make sure it's a prime candidate for automation. And if it's not, what other t approaches can we take? We're leading out the process, re-engineering it, making it somewhat of an automation candidate, right? So going through that and then branching off and whether it's going to be, a, you know, being able to automate, from day, uh, automate yeah. the process from day one or having to make some adjustments uh, to potentially make it an automation candidate down the line. You and I talked about defining processes, yeah. and you had an interesting analogy it was called the bubbles. Yeah. Uh, explain to me how you did that in, in defining which processes you should attack. Yeah, definitely. So we have an intake process, part of the COE. So we basically just do some pre-qualifying questions, making sure that you know it's going to be a candidate for automation. Aside from that, then taking a, a deeper dive into it, understanding the complexity and the benefits. So outside of that exercise, we'll then be able to graph our processes on a four quadrant uh, based on the level mm -hmm. of complexity and expected 
benefit that we'd have. So the bigger the, ben the bigger the actual uh, benefit of the process, the bigger the bubble. So our goal is to have big bubbles in our in our quadrant and attack those processes for automation, and and that's what our prioritization is based off of. So you're attacking these big kind of ROI, Correct. you know, processes. Yeah. Um, Benefits exactly. So what, in, what do you see? In essence, it's it's low complexity and high benefits, right? The, the more FTE or the time savings or, or pain points. Really understanding yeah. the business. What are the pain points in that business? And what's going to make them, you know, be able to get through their day-to-day -day work uh, a lot easier? So that's really what our focus is: is looking at obviously the higher the FTE saves and the time saving. Mm -hmm. That's a thing. But also the intangible benefits that are going to really improve the colleagues' lives uh, altogether. Those soft those soft benefits are hard to measure. Sometimes. They are. Yes. Um, how how do you see that going? I mean, how, how, and you have an, kind of an executive, just some champions within the company. Do they look at those soft benefits also? Yes. So, yeah. so obviously the hard benefits are really easy to quantify. And some something that you can actually identify early on. Uh, but those soft benefits are, are going to take some time. You know, whether it's actually getting some feedback from the client, or even being able to really track some trends in terms of SLAs and how how your cycle times have improved over over you know the journey of RPA and, and that automated process. Uh, so that's the approach that we're taking. Um, we're really wanting to solicit more feedback from our clients yeah. on how our overall service levels are. But from internally, we, we've experienced some, some timeless and accuracy improvement yeah. uh, just from a sheer defects and, and cycle time. Awesome. Um, have to do it because it's UiPath interview. Yeah. Like, we're partnership, we're yeah. doing great. Tell us a little bit about how UiPath is doing for you and how you feel yeah, about yeah. us. The partnership has been great thus far. You guys have really allowed us to kick off our paid journey and, and be flexible for us, yeah. and it's going to really enable us to scale in the future. And not only that, just the, the involvement and, and the flexibility that UiPath offers. Uh, having a customer success uh, manager is really critical for us. Having a single point of contact that we can reach out to, and just really getting to understand you know what UiPath is, has offered now and what it's currently or what's going to offer in the future. Yeah. Uh, so really helps us you know have that strategic partnership with UiPath. So uh, I definitely think it's been a beneficial relationship going with UiPath and it's, it's been great thus far. Fantastic. Well, yeah. we, we appreciate the business and the partnership. Um, I know, uh, you know, everybody here, next time we're going to see David, I believe is in Forward 3 in yeah. Vegas, yeah, that's October 14th through 16th. If you have not registered for that conference, that is our huge yearly conference. You definitely want to go there. I look forward to seeing you. Yeah, Thank course. you again for the panel discussion. I think everybody here had a, a great talk and, and your insight and inputs. Um, Thank you so much. We're working with you. My pleasure. Okay? Take you. care.